How long does it take to become a millionaire? That's the million dollar question that everybody wants to know. Now, I wanna give you a few different answers to this that I think can benefit you because I know that if you're probably watching this video right now, you're looking for the fast track and I wanna share with you some of my thoughts around that. And then I'm also gonna share with you the long-term approach that you can start taking action on right now today, especially if you're younger, you got time on your side, you can benefit from to ensure that you're a millionaire at least in your lifetime as you approach retirement. Now, the first answer I'm gonna give you, how long does it take to become a millionaire? How long do you want it to take? It takes however long you want it to take. See, when I first started pursuing success in my early 20s, I wanted to become a millionaire by the time I was 30 years old. That was my goal. Um, I got into self-improvement when I was 17 years old, started learning about different possibilities and improving myself, but I started my first business when I was 21 years old. During that time, I was learning about business and entrepreneurship and marketing and sales and all these skills and investing and things like that. Um, and I knew it was possible because I was young and I had time on my side, but I knew to get there by the time I was 30 years old, I'm gonna have to take massive action. I'm gonna have to work 80 hour weeks if necessary. I'm gonna have to shortcut the learning curve by learning from others and modeling success and immersing myself and giving up my weekends and all of that sort of stuff. And I was willing to because I really wanted that success. I wanted to become a millionaire by the time I was 30 years old. Now, other people might have decided I wanna be a millionaire, but you know, I got more time on my side and I don't wanna sacrifice as much and so I'm gonna go at it more on a slower pace, in which case it's gonna take you longer. Now, I ended up becoming a millionaire at 27 years old. Uh, I'm 34 years old now. And so I was able to, to beat that. I had a million dollar net worth and then after that I started making a million dollars or more a year. So I overachieved on that goal. But to do it, I decided for myself, I don't have patience, I don't wanna wait, I don't wanna you know, become a millionaire when I'm retired and 60 years old. I read a book called The 4 Hour Work Week and it described how a lot of people, they work their whole life in the rat race till they're 60, 65 years old, then they start enjoying their life. I didn't wanna do that. I said to myself, listen, I'm gonna figure out how to become successful, I'm gonna do whatever it takes, and I wanna make sure that by the time I'm 30, I can you know, be in a financial position where I'm abundant and I can be free for the rest of my life. I don't have to wait till I'm 65 years old. So I made that decision. I wanna get there fast. I'm gonna put in as much time as I possibly can. Now, there is a rule that exists. You might have heard of it before. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell talked about it called the 10,000 hour rule. The 10,000 hour rule is what he described and what he's learned and studied amongst people that are masters at what they do, people that are the most successful, that on average it takes about 10,000 hours, which is about maybe 10 years. 10 years to master something or to become incredibly successful at it. Now, that, you know, that's a kind of a good number and kind of like a, a baseline to, to go off of, I guess, or a way of looking at it. Um, I think it can happen faster in a lot of cases. I think you can fast track and accelerate it, of course, if uh, you learn from people and you shortcut your learning curve by learning from other people's failures and mistakes and also their successes so that you don't have to go through those and they can kind of give you their wisdom and their experience that maybe they learned in their lifetime and you can benefit from that and allow you to move further faster from that. I think that's always the smartest way to accelerate any process is what I personally do with anything that I wanna learn in my life. Right now I'm learning golf and I decided to hire a teacher, an instructor, someone that's been on the PGA Tour, very skilled at what he does, and I don't wanna go the long way. I don't wanna just you know, practice golf and maybe develop some bad habits that I've gotta correct later down the road. I just wanna to go to the best, someone I can learn from, and learn from the beginning and compress that time if I can as much as possible. So that's always the smartest way of going about it, but there's many other factors, right? Factors such as, number one, a lot of the beliefs and the mindsets that you already have that you're bringing with you as you're starting this journey. So for example, if you have a background and a history from growing up when you're a kid and you have a lot of psychological issues and limiting beliefs that you cultivated, for example, let's say your parents or your teachers or your friends or whatever taught you at a young age that money is bad and that money is the root of all evil and uh, you, know, you shouldn't make too much money in life and people that are rich are greedy and selfish, then you've got a lot of disempowering belief systems that you need to work on because now you link pain to money, you're gonna have an inner conflict where you desire money, you wanna pursue it, 
but you have this inner conflict where you also link pain to money, and so you're gonna take two steps forward, two steps back, and that's gonna delay your process towards becoming a millionaire because you gotta rework out your software. You've got software that's old and outdated and is, is uh, coded poorly and has maybe viruses in it that you have to rework through and kind of get your mindset right into a more empowering belief system, right? You might have uh, a lot of scarcity beliefs um, that have been holding you back. You might even have negative patterns and habits like laziness and procrastination and maybe even anxiety and lack of confidence and low self-esteem and maybe depression uh, is something that you might have to struggle with too and maybe, you know, just lacking physical energy and, you know, there might be a lot of those things you might have to work through. And for me, you know, it's not like I just started on this journey and I was just on a smooth path towards success. I had a lot of issues that I had to work through because I got into self-development when I was 17. I was incredibly shy and I started working on myself at 17, reading books and going to seminars and hiring coaches and working on my communication skills, my speaking skills and overcoming my fears and all these barriers that I, I, I had in myself in my life and working on being a harder worker and building work ethic because I didn't really have that. There's a lot of things that I had to work through to get to a point where I could be consistent and focused and set a goal and follow through and achieve it and be consistent. Because before then, I'd set a goal, I'd do it for like a week or two, and then I'd get bored or lazy or procrastinate, and then I'd find a new thing and just pursue that. And I just, it was so hard because I had, I just had so many things that I had to overcome first before I was ready for the success. Now, on the other hand, I know people my, you know, Tatiana being one of them, uh, many of you guys know if you follow her on, on YouTube, she became successful, became a millionaire at, oh my gosh, like 24 years old or something like that, 23 years old. And, um, you know, for her, what I noticed and I've observed is she didn't have a lot of the conflicts that I had. She didn't have laziness and procrastination. Like she's just a hard worker, even to this day, um, just like she sets her goals for herself and she just does it. You know, she, she's tired, doesn't feel like it, she doesn't matter. She just does what she needs to do every single day. She's an overachiever, a workaholic. I have to tell her, babe, come on, like, you know, get away from the computer right now. Let's just chill right now and relax. And, and she just like, just has to do things and does them and is incredible at that. So there are some people that are like that. There are some people that, uh, you know, don't have to do as much of the inner work and the mindset stuff uh, because, based on their circumstances, their upbringing, or whatever it might be, many factors, known and unknown, maybe most of that we're unconscious, not aware of. Some people don't have that, so therefore success is a lot easier and faster for them. Other people, though, another big factor is opportunity. Now, we live in a world, there's an abundance of opportunity, more opportunity than ever before, and the internet has changed that, where, you know, that's why, for example, you're seeing kids, like high school kids, become millionaires. It's mind-blowing. Uh, you see kids even on YouTube that are like 16 years old that are millionaires. It blows, you know, blows my mind. Uh, I've got even students um, who've been through my courses and you know, clients that I've worked with that are young, or even I know parents where their kids are successful and, and are millionaires too. It's just insane. And so the, world, the internet has changed things so much where um, it's providing opportunity for everybody. And especially with the big boom of the internet and technology, it provides opportunities that are available and taking advantage and leveraging those are key. But obviously timing is important. The right opportunity is important. Um, failure is part of any process. I failed, Tatiana's failed. Everyone that I know that is a millionaire or successful has failed. But the key is failing forward and failing fast and learning from those failures as fast as, can, as you can and moving on to the next one. If you can do that, and as you know, I think Churchill said, success is going from failure to failure to failure without losing enthusiasm along the way. If you can really embrace that, then obviously the, the failures aren't really gonna be setbacks and they can actually be stepping stones where you gain a lot of experience and knowledge and wisdom from that that you bring with you to the next opportunity that allows you to succeed with that one so much faster. So there's all these variables and these different factors and you might have to go through a few different opportunities, but obviously some people it's the right opportunity at the right time. They take advantage of it. Um, you know, they say that luck, the definition that I like, is when hard work and preparation meets opportunity, right? Because there's many people that have the same opportunity. They don't have success with it. You can't, you got to understand that people get rewarded in public for the thousands of hours that they practice in private. And so the hard work and the preparation is what contributes to that. 
right? So um, the opportunity, the timing, learning from other people, those are all things that can accelerate it. Um, taking massive action. Obviously, you know, if you're lazy and procrastinating and you, know, you, you get beat up by a failure and you're sitting on your pity pot as a drama king or queen and being a victim and saying, oh, you know, it sucks, this is not for me and why me and all that sort of stuff, that's gonna prevent you from just moving forward. The ability to pick yourself back up, get back on track and say, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. I'm a whatever it takes kind of person. I will find the way, I will make the way, there'll be a wall, I will find a way over the wall under the wall, around the wall, break through the wall, I will find a way on the other side of that wall. When you've got that mentality, it happens a lot faster. So some people obviously never become a millionaire. Some people, uh, I often find the reason is not because of the opportunities, because they're all around us. I've shared many of them with you guys here on my channel and my, you know, my content and whatnot, great opportunities I've benefited from, many other people are benefiting from. The challenge most often is not the opportunity, it's not the outside, it's not the external world, it's where the inner game, the internal world, and reworking all of that, that that requires awareness and attention, humbling yourself, being willing to be critical and to look and explore uh, flaws and weaknesses and deficiencies and limiting beliefs and fears and conflicting values and valuing growth enough to go through the process and maybe going through books and investing in yourself and reading and learning and actually doing that work the faster that you do it, the faster that your mindset is optimized for success and becoming a millionaire. So I would say that's the most important piece that will determine whether or not you're a millionaire along in combination with the right opportunity that's scalable, that can grow and help you become a millionaire. But when you work on yourself, you're better at making decisions. You're more creative, you're more intelligent. You can evaluate situations a lot differently. You have more confidence in yourself and what you're doing and all of those are a huge advantage um, that are certain common traits when you start studying success and reading books of the most successful people. You see the universal commonalities and traits of what they do and what make them successful that we gotta model if you wanna become a millionaire. Now, that's the one approach. There's a few actually approaches in there, but the second one is, I like to always think, you know, when I was 18 years old, that's when I got into investing. Because I thought to myself, I have these goals and these ambitions to become a millionaire, but what if I fuck it all up? You know, what if I'm just an idiot and I make a really stupid decision and I just keep failing and failing and failing and failing business after business after business and I never make it through business. I never make it through my job. I never make it in my, my dreams and I just am a dumbass and I sabotage everything or maybe I start making it and I just screw it all up. How can I ensure that I become a millionaire no matter what? even if I mess it all up? The answer to that was investing. See, I read a book uh, called The Wealthy Barber when I was 18 years old, and it talked about investing in mutual funds. And I don't believe in mutual funds anymore. They're kind of dying away. Today, I believe in index funds. An index fund is a basket of companies. And so you own one stock on the stock market, a public stock, and it's an ETF, an exchange-traded fund, and it's an index that owns 100 companies, 200 companies, 500 companies, the biggest companies in the world or the biggest companies in the United States or wherever you might live. And by doing so, I can own a piece of the biggest companies in the United States, the S&P 500, the top 500 companies. And that way I'm not you know, taking a big risk by putting all my money in one company. It's spread out. These are established companies, the biggest companies in the world, more stable and secure than my business or your business. And what I can do is I can put my money and pay myself first from whatever work that I have for the rest of my life because you're always gonna work, you're gonna make money at your job, business, whatever it is, but I gotta set the habit of putting aside 10%. If I put aside 10% and I just invest this every single month into this index fund or this mutual fund at the time, if I just do that and I'm young and I do that again and again, month after month, and even better, if I automate it, I don't have to think about it, I just live without this money in my account every month, it just happens automatically, which you can do today. If I just do that, I learned the power of compounding. The power of compounding, which essentially is, the, I think the ninth wonder of the world is what Einstein called it, where your money at beginning is very slow, but starts to compound over time. And that it would pretty much ensure that in my lifetime, by the time I retire, by the time I'm 60, 65 years old, I would be a millionaire. In fact, I'd be a multimillionaire depending on how much money I start with and how much money I stick to.
Now, when I first started at 18, my, my first investment was a mutual fund, uh, a Bank of Montreal BMO um, mutual fund. The minimum investment was 500 bucks. So I put 500 bucks in and I didn't really have, I wasn't able to put 10% of my income at first. So I just put $25 a month, 25 bucks a month, came out of my checkings account and automatically went to this mutual fund month after month, forgot about it. And then after maybe a year, I think, I upped that to 100 bucks a month. And then I made my next investment, which was, uh, another mutual fund, which is a $5,000 minimum investment. I saved up money for that. And then I also put 100 bucks a month into that. I just always said to myself, I'm never going to touch that. That's not for my spending. It's not for my house or anything. That's for my retirement to ensure that if you know, no matter what, I'm set up for the rest of my life. And I don't have any div- like, um, you know, dividend or interest, compound interest uh, calculators for you, but you can look them up. But if you determine there's a certain amount of money you put every single month, and the historical return, uh, the average of the S&P 500, let's say, is about 10% a year. And so if, let's say you factor that in, 10% a year, and you know, the index fund, let's say, pays a, a dividend as well. But if you put in a certain amount of money, let's say it's 100 bucks a month, into this index fund, and it pays the dividend, that dividend just goes to reinvesting and buying more shares, and you do nothing else, and you just automate it, you'll become a millionaire in your lifetime. Now, if you're someone that's older, if you're maybe in your, you know, uh, your, your, your 50s or your 60s or something like that, then you don't have that time on your side. And so you might have that disadvantage to not really benefit from the compounding on that scale. It might be a little bit different for you. Um, you know, or maybe if you're in your 30s or 40s and you're you know, getting started, it might take a little bit longer. You might have to put a little bit more money in or it might take a little bit longer. You might not you know, make that million bucks, let's say, until you're 70 years old. Right? So you've got to do the math and factor that in. I'd recommend to do a, a Google search on these compounding uh, calculators so you can kind of get an idea of that. But that's another way you could become a millionaire in your lifetime. And for me, that's always been the strategy. If nothing else works, at least I've got that. At least I've got that. And so it might take 40 years, but who cares? Make that decision for yourself and for your future because when you get to 65 years old, you're going to thank your younger self and the decision you made right now today. My response and answer was to pursue both. I'm going to set this up so it's automated and I'll ensure that I become a millionaire in my lifetime. And then number two, I don't want to wait that long. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to fast track and study success and find the best opportunities and take massive action with it. And if it doesn't work out, I'm going to fail forward, move on to the next one. I'm going to continually work on myself even more than I'm working on my business or my success because I know that who determines my success is not the outside world. It's not even the opportunity. It's not the internet. It's me. I determine my success, you determine your success, I can't make you successful, only you can make you successful. And the question really is, how long do you want it to take? You get to decide that. Maybe it might take you three years. Great, maybe it's five years, maybe it's 10 years, maybe it's 20 years, maybe it's 30 years, maybe it's 40 years. You get to decide how long you want it to take. So I'm gonna throw the question back at at you. How long do you want it to take? Decide when that goal is. For me, it was 30 years old. That was my goal. I had a plan. This is what I was going to do. I was going to commit. I was going to sacrifice. I was willing to pay the price because there's always a price you got to pay and you have to pay the price up front. You can't say to success, hey, give me success now and then I'll pay later for it. It doesn't work that way. Success says you got to show and demonstrate that you're really committed to success. You got to show and demonstrate that up front with your commitment, with your time, with your effort, with your money, with your resources, with your creativity, with your intelligence. You got to keep banging at that door again and again and again and again and again. And then eventually, poof, you break through and the opportunity grows faster than you can possibly imagine and you become a millionaire. That's how it works. So, how long do you want it to take you? Love to hear your thoughts on it. This is just my approach and my mindset and what I've learned through my journey. Uh, but leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you and I hope that you enjoyed this video and it provides a little bit more clarity for you as well. So if you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up here on YouTube. I appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos and if you're looking for some opportunities to get started, you're not quite sure where, you haven't quite found that vehicle yet, uh, then I want to invite you to take an online quiz that I put together. It's a quiz that you can take at projectlifemastery.com quiz. It's free to take. Go to that page. It takes about two minutes to complete. 
but I have some questions for you that will help you get clarity on what are the best business opportunities online that are in most alignment with how much money you have to invest, how much time you have, your strengths and your motivation that you have for starting your business. Because all of those things are gonna matter to help you find the best opportunity for you. Based on that, I can point you in a better direction uh, that might you know, lead to a better chance of success for you than others. So projectlifemastery.com slash quiz. I'll link that below for you as well. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.